In this video, I will define derivative using a geometric interpretation, as slope. There is a second important interpretation as rate of change that I will explain in a later video. To begin, I will try to define derivative with a simple geometric idea. Consider a function f and a number a on its domain. I want to call f prime of a the slope of the line tangent to the graph of f at the point with x coordinate a. And this number, f prime of a, is what I want to call the derivative of f at a. For example, let's look at the function f defined by this graph. I want to compute f prime of 0. First, I find a point in the graph with x coordinate 0. Then I draw the line tangent to the graph at that point. And that line has slope 2. This is just an estimate. So the derivative of f at 0 is 2. Or if I want to compute f prime of minus 1, I look for the point in the graph with x coordinate minus 1. And the tangent line at that point is horizontal. So it has a slope 0. So f prime of minus 1 is 0. This makes sense, but is this good enough for a definition? There is a problem. I want to define derivative. I could like to define it as the slope of the graph, but I do not know how to define a slope of a curve in general, only a slope of a line. And that's why I try to define derivative as a slope of the tangent line instead. But then, how do I define tangent line? One way to define tangent line is using linear approximations or instantaneous rate of chains. But how do I define those concepts? The best way to define them is probably using derivatives. And then we are back where we started. This is the problem. These concepts do not look difficult. In fact, I think we all have some sort of intuition of what they mean. But they are difficult to define rigorously. All the easy definitions of one of these concepts relies on one of the others. We need to find a way to define one of them from scratch, and then we can use it to define the rest. And it turns out, the only way to define any of these concepts from scratch is to use limits. In the end, there is no way to avoid using limits in order to define derivative. That's what I'm going to do. Let's try again. I begin with this curve in blue in the picture. I take two points, P and Q, on the curve. I look at the line going through P and Q, in red in the picture. Then I am going to keep P fixed, and I am going to move Q closer to P. And closer, and closer. Look what is happening. As Q gets closer and closer to P, this red line is becoming the tangent line at P. This suggests an idea. The tangent line can be obtained somehow as a limit of the red lines. I will try to get a proper definition of derivative from this. Let me look back at the generic red line. Let's assume the blue curve is the graph of a function f. Let's call a and b the x-coordinates of the points p and q respectively. We know their y-coordinates because p and q are on the graph of f. Then the slope of the red line, the line going through p and q, is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Like before, let's move q closer and closer to p. Making q equal to p would mean making b equal to a, which makes no sense, but instead I can take the limit as b approaches a. And in that limit, the red line becomes the line tangent at p. So the slope of the red line becomes the slope of the tangent line, which is the derivative of f at a. And that's it. This is what I will take as the definition of derivative of the function f at a point a. This will be the starting point. In the back of my mind, I am thinking this represents the slope of the tangent line, but I am choosing this expression instead because it is a good definition by itself. 
it does not use or rely on any other undefined concept. I am going to modify it slightly, however. I have used here b as the variable for the limit, but this was accidental. It is just what I happen to be calling that variable in the picture. I could call it anything else, and it is more common to call it x. So I will change it. Now, for this to be a rigorous definition, I need to introduce my notation. Before starting, I should say that a is a real number and f is a function. And I will require f to be defined at least on an interval centered at a, so that it makes sense to compute this limit. Notice that this limit, like any other limit, may or may not exist. So the derivative at this point may or may not exist. I am going to say that the function f is differentiable when this limit exists. And to complete the definition, if we ever say a function f is differentiable without specifying where, it means that f is differentiable everywhere it is defined. In the next video, I will present an example of how to use this definition to actually compute a derivative. But before doing that, there is an alternative way to write this equation, which is entirely equivalent. Instead of using x as the variable for the limit, use h, defined as x minus a. Then in the limit, instead of x approaches a, I say that h approaches zero. In the numerator of the function, instead of f of x, I will have f of a plus h. The rest of the numerator is the same, and the denominator is simply h. These two limits are entirely the same. It is kind of a change of variables. Anything you can do with one, you can also do it with the other. Take whichever one you prefer as a definition. Finally, to complete the video, we can go back and revisit the concept of tangent line. We can now define it. I can now say that the line tangent to the graph of a function f at the point with x coordinate a is the line that goes to the point a f of a, that is the point of tangency in the graph, and with slope f prime of a, which has been defined independently. This defines tangent line because any line is fully determined by one point and the slope. We can even write it as an equation. The line through that point and with that slope will be y equals f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a.